This is Michael McAvoy, and you're listening to Nutrition for Your Liver. We're going to talk about using a blood test as well as what we can do nutritionally to support the function of our liver. This is a very, very interesting and important subject. Because the liver is such a massive organ, it has so many responsibilities, it's such a big player in health conditions today. When people have a variety of health issues, the liver is always a central component in, in so many of these conditions. So we can really look at a basic blood test, how to assess the function of your liver, and we can even put together nutritional protocols designed to help support the function of your liver. So let's go ahead and talk about the important roles that the liver has. It's important to point out that the liver is such a massive organ. It's continuously filtering the blood of toxins every three minutes for your entire life. So basically all of the blood of the body passes through the liver every three minutes continuously on and on and on and on. So it's just constantly picking up these toxins that are in the blood, removing them, excreting them, detoxifying them. The liver also synthesizes various hormones and it also can detoxify hormones once they're used up. Of course the liver produces bile. Bile is essential to remove these toxins and when the, when the liver filters these toxins out, it dumps them into the bile. Bile gets secreted into the intestines, and we defecate the bile out in many cases. Some of the bile gets reabsorbed. And uh, the bile, of course, is being stored in the gallbladder, which we're going to talk about a little bit. The liver is also essential for protein synthesis. So in order for you to obtain the amino acids from your protein foods, from your diet, you've got to have healthy, proper liver function. It's actually protein is one of the most essential nutrients to feed and fuel the function of the liver. But the liver is also involved in blood clotting factors. It produces certain blood proteins such as fibrinogen and prothrombin, for example. The liver stores and releases glycogen and participates in a process known as gluconeogenesis. So it's, it's highly involved in glucose regulation. High and low blood sugar issues can involve liver function. And it also, the liver synthesizes cholesterol. It's one of the most important substances that the body makes is cholesterol, despite what you're likely been misled about cholesterol. It's a very important nutrient. The liver processes it, sends it out, packages it up, ships it out. The liver also stores nutrients. It's a major warehouse of fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A, for example, vitamin D, and uh, v various minerals like phosphorus, zinc, and selenium, and copper are stored in the liver in high amounts. And also the liver participates in blood pressure regulation through the, what's known as the angiotensin system and the blood pressure regulation system also involves the adrenal glands and the kidneys, and so the liver is an organ that's involved in this as well. So what can go wrong with the liver? There's a number of problems that can arise, and we can look at these on a basic blood test to help identify what these are. So first of all, liver cell damage happens when the, the liver enzymes are spilling out of the liver because there's damage to the cells of the liver. There's another pattern called liver dysfunction, and this can induce various symptoms like headaches and edema and such. The third problem that can go wrong in the liver is biliary insufficiency. If the bile is not flowing, either because the bile ducts are obstructed or just because there is not an adequate amount of nutrition feeding the liver, if bile isn't produced, toxins can't be re relieved and excreted from the body, and we might have dietary fat deficiencies as well. Bile duct obstruction could be caused by gallstones or any kind of obstruction in the biliary duct like a uh, cirrhosis or um, if there's any kind of toxicity because of um, hepatitis for example this can be this can be an issue that causes biliary duct obstruction also carcinoma any type of liver cancer can cause a major biliary duct obstruction also the next problem that can arise with the liver is a common condition known as fatty liver and fatty liver is when there's a high triglyceride accumulation that's taking place and when there's a high fatty liver content the liver just cannot function optimally. There's ways, of course, we can defatten the liver through certain nutritional protocols. And then lastly, there can be any kind of functional liver aberration. So in the two detox cycles of liver phase one and phase two, there can be all kinds of problems that arise because of various issues. Okay, and then let's take a look at some of the essential liver markers on a blood test. And so you can actually use a basic routine blood test to assess the functionality of the liver. Let's take a look at what uh, a number of these essential functions actually are. So number one is the albumin. 
and the albumin actually functions as one of the most important liver markers. We want to see the albumin between 4.1 and 4.8. If you're in SI units, it's 41 to 48. And there's a major correlation between decreased liver function when the albumin level is low. So albumin is a major blood protein. It transports important nutrients and antioxidants. And it also can transport hormones. And it's a very important nutrient. It's, it's, if it's low, the liver is compromised. The next three markers you see here, GGT, ALT, and AST, these are liver enzymes. We want to see them between about 15 and 30. And if we see elevations in any of these three enzymes, we know that there is some kind of liver cell damage that is taking place. And we have to give attention to those. The next liver marker that's primary is the total bilirubin. And the total bilirubin is an indicator of bile duct obstruction if it's high. If we see the bilirubin greater than 1, this is an indicator of bile duct obstruction. And this is often elevated in, in a condition known as Gilbert's syndrome, where there's um, chronic bile duct obstruction, the bile is not flowing. If you're in SI units, the bilirubin total should be between about 3.4 and 17.1. And there's a couple other liver-related markers. The triglycerides, if we see the triglycerides are elevated, then this is an indication of poor fat digestion. Remember that bile serves as a, a degreaser and um, also is essential for breaking down our fats. So if the triglycerides are high, think that there's problems with the liver. It's the first thing I would think of. And then the other markers that could be related to liver function are the ALP, alkaline phosphatase. If that's high, that could be related to liver function, although it could be related to other things, so it's not a primary factor. And then the LDH, if we see an LDH greater than 200, that often indicates some kind of problem with the biliary tree or with the liver in general. So let's take a look at a few examples using a blood test here. So we see this person's total bilirubin of 1.6, that's high. This is an indication of biliary duct obstruction or bile insufficiency. And so here we've got this little picture of the gallbladder. Remember the gallbladder secretes bile, so the liver produces the bile. Bile gets stored in the gallbladder. Gall gallbladder secretes it into the small intestines, which you see there, just to the left of the pancreas. And so this is where the toxins get released into the intestines. It's also the site of absorption of many nutrients, and including fats and fat-soluble vitamins. So an elevated bilirubin is an indication of bilireduct obstruction or bile insufficiency. And then here's another pattern of a liver problem. This is liver cell damage. This is when we see elevations in these liver enzymes. Look at how high these are. Remember, our ideal range is 10 to 35 or 15 to 35, and this person's at 220, 110, and 196. This is a major indicator that there's liver cell damage that is taking place. We want these enzymes to be between 15 and 30 or so. And then here we see the uh, decreased liver function. This is represented by that low albumin level. Remember, we want to see the albumin between about 4.1 and 4.8. This person's at 3.9. Because albumin plays such an important role in the body, if it's low, we may see problems with fluid retention, like edema or aseities. These are common among individuals that have decreased levels of albumin. Another problem with low albumin is it suggests that there may be low glutathione, which is a very important antioxidant that protects the cells of the body from free radicals and from toxins. So what can we do about nutrition for the liver? Now we know that there's a number of whole foods that serve as the primary fuel that feeds the liver. And so our whole foods, so number one, protein. Amino acids derived from your protein foods, such as meat, eggs, and poultry, all these amino acids serve as the primary fuel source for the liver. The liver metabolizes these amino acids, and it uses them to detoxify. The liver also needs B vitamins, and we can get B vitamins from whole foods, such as vegetables, from animal protein, meat, as well as whole grains contain B vitamins. And then minerals, of course, are also essential to feed the liver, like magnesium and zinc, for example, phosphorus. These can be obtained from the diet as well. Obviously, vegetables, whole grains, and meat all contain minerals. And we also need to focus on proper hydration, because remember that the bile that the liver produces is made mostly from water. And so if we're dehydrated, if we're not drinking enough water, if we're drinking too many diuretics like caffeine or alcohol, this is going to be toxic to the liver. The liver needs water to function. So what are some specialty foods? So beets and beet greens, artichokes, are important um, vegetables that can feed the liver. They contain special nutrients that can produce bile 
and also can detoxify the liver. Egg yolks can have an important role in uh, liver health because they contain lecithin, and lecithin helps to defatten the liver. If you have a fatty liver, if you've got high triglycerides, for example, egg yolks are a wonderful way because of their high lecithin content to defatten the liver. And also cruciferous vegetables, they contain indole 3 carbonyl, they contain certain antioxidant sulfur compounds that um, are really important for the functionality of the liver. And what about some basic nutritional supplements and herbs that can support the function of the liver? So we talked about on the previous slide B-complex, and that certainly can be something we could take supplementally. We can also take the supplement betaine, betaine HCL. Betaine feeds both phases of liver detoxification. There's an important nutrient known as NAC or N-acetylcysteine. And NAC is the precursor to glutathione, which is a very important antioxidant to protect the liver. We can also supplement with certain amino acids like taurine, methionine, and glycine. All of these have very important roles in the liver's detoxification cycles. And also specific antioxidants, glutathione, lipoic acid, SOD, otherwise known as superoxide dismutase. These are antioxidants that also protect the function of the liver. We can look at herbal medicine as a way to support the function of the liver. And these can include herbs like dandelion, milk thistle, artichoke leaf extract, rhubarb, burdock, and greater celandine. And just briefly mention here that milk thistle is very protective of the liver. The artichoke leaf extract is also protective of the liver. And it can also help us to produce more bile. The same is true with rhubarb and greater celandine, these particular herbs are what are called cholagogic herbs. They help to stimulate the flow of bile, helping the liver to detoxify. So I hope that this was a useful presentation for you. Please subscribe to this channel by clicking the link below. Also, please visit my website, www.metabolichealing.com, to learn more about my nutritional consulting services and to learn more about blood chemistry analysis. Best in health.